everybody! I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the SPICES assessment tool. So let's get into it. So the SPICES assessment is an acronym. It helps us to identify some common syndromes that require nursing intervention. This is specifically used for the older adult. As we age, right, we know this normal process of aging changes every part of our body and can increase our risk of developing certain health related conditions. So this assessment tool helps us to assess for those specific conditions. In the acute care setting, so like the hospital setting, it is recommended that this is done within the first 24 hours of admission. It is focused on the most common health issues only. I did want to make sure I pointed that out. This is not the catch-all. This is not good enough to just do the spices and then you're done. You still have to do a full individual head to toe. Because yes, this does talk about the most common health issues in the elderly, but it doesn't cover everything. And then it helps to identify patients who have additional needs, require additional nursing intervention, or have other risk factors. So now that we know what it is and what's the purpose, let's actually go through the acronym. Now let's start breaking it down by each letter. These are common health conditions that can occur in the older adult. Starting with S, sleep disorders. So you're going to be asking them questions about their sleeping pattern. Do they have trouble sleeping? Do they take frequent naps? Do they have a hard time breathing in their sleep? If you haven't watched my video on insomnia, I'll link it below. But in that video, I detail why we have primary and secondary insomnia and how elderly people are more likely to have secondary insomnia related to other health conditions that they have. And a lot of those things are naturally occurring with aging. So assessing them for sleep disorders, asking them about their sleeping pattern. P, problems with eating or feeding. So this can include things like dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, or coordination issues. They have a hard time. Maybe they have arthritis. Maybe they have Parkinson's. They have something else that is causing them to have a hard time feeding themselves. Or they have a hard time swallowing. They are choking risk and aspiration risk. I is for incontinence. This is bowel and bladder. Now I do want to make sure that I make this very clear. It is not normal to be incontinent. I know we see that a lot as nurses because we take care of sick people, right? But incontinence is not a normal thing to happen with age. So screening our patients for incontinence, bowel or bladder. And when we talk about bladder specifically, what kind of incontinence is it? Is it stress incontinence? Is it urge incontinence? That kind of thing. So asking those questions. Confusion. So are they currently confused, right, while you're doing your assessment right now? Are they in a confused state? Do they have a history of confusion? Do they have a history of dementia, delirium, depression, anything like that? So assessing for those things. E is for evidence of falls. So this is going to be both subjective and objective, asking them have they had a history of falls, have they fallen recently, but also doing a really good thorough head to toe and looking for signs of falls, recent injuries, bruising, cuts, scrapes, things like that. Observing their gait when they walk into the room, how is their mobility, things like that. So checking for risk factors for falls and asking about recent falls. And then the final S is skin breakdown. So again, subjective, objective, asking them questions about their continence status, um, their mobility status, but also doing a full thorough head to toe skin check, looking for areas where a pressure ulcer might form or is forming, checking for risk factors, and then doing appropriate nursing interventions to prevent this from happening. So like I said before, this is the most common things that can occur, but it's not the only things that can occur. So when you do your head to toe, when you're admitting an elderly patient, make sure that you're doing the spices. It can be done very quickly, but don't forget to do everything else too. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.